Hello and welcome to our community story time. My name is Carla and I am a youth librarian for the Multnomah County Library's uh, Midland Branch. And I'm also a member of the BCLA team, which is also called Black Cultural Library Advocates. And we are in partnership with WIC. And welcome. We're so happy to have you here today. Well, Carla, it's nice to be with you. My name is Sabrina Villemanet and I am a WIC program supervisor. Um, WIC stands for Women, Infants, and Children's Supplemental Nutrition Program. I'm also a lactation consultant who specializes in helping families through their breastfeeding journey. Carla and I are both so happy to be with you today. Welcome. Okay, before we get started with our stories, how about a song? It's called Hello Friends and it's in sign language. So let's rehearse a little bit and then we'll go into it. It's called Hello Friends. Hello Friends. It's time to say hello. Okay, here we go. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello. Very good. Now that you know it, let's say it again. Here we go. Hello friends. Hello friends. Hello friends. It's time to say hello. Very good. That was wonderful. Nice job. Well, hello, friends. I am so excited to present the story of the Little Red Hen to you. It is written by Jerry Pickney, and I think it's illustrated as well by Jerry Pickney, and by and it's published by the Young Penguins Readers Group. So let's dive into this wonderful story. The little red hen greeted the sun with a cheery, good morning, look at that beautiful sun. It was going to be another busy day. Oh, I'm sure we all have busy days. While hunting for worms and berries for her young ones, she came upon some strange seeds. Look at those seeds. I wonder what kind of seeds they are. Ever so carefully, she scooped them up, then headed home. Let's see what happens. On the way, she greeted her neighbors, the short brown dog, there he is, the thin gray rat, the tall black goat, and the round pink pig. I found these seeds, she said. Can any of you tell me what they are? So the little red hen's showing the seeds to her friends. I wonder what kind of seeds they are. They're wheat seeds, said one of the animals. If you plant them, they'll grow into wheat for baking bread. Wow, wheat seeds. I bet you uh, they are going to do something amazing with those seeds. Who will help me plant these seeds? Asked the little red hen. No, not I, said the rat. Not I, said the goat. Not I, said the pig. Surely you will, the little red hen said to the dog. You are so fond of digging. Not I, said the dog. Oh, amazing. It looks like no one's going to help her. Let's see what she does. Very well then, said the little red hen. I will plant them myself. She dug holes in the ground and dropped the seeds in. A very busy hen was she. Looks like she has some family members here helping her see what else happens. Every day, the little red hen searched for food to feed her young ones. She also found time to care for the seedlings. She and her chicks watched as the wheat grew strong and ripe. It is now time for harvesting, said the little red hen. 
Wow, look at the wheat. It's as tall as the sky. Look, it's touching the sun. Let's see what she and her little uh, chicklins do. Who will help me cut and thresh the wheat? She asked. Not I, said the goat. Not I, said the pig. Not I, said the dog. Surely you will, the little red hen said to the rat. You can use your tail to chop it easily. Not I, said the rat. Wow, it looks like no one wants to help her. What will she do? Very well then, I will do it myself, said the little red hen. After snipping the stalks with her beak, she separated the grain with her claws. A very busy hen she was. So look, there she is separating it. Looks like her little uh, babies are helping her. Are you very helpful with your parents at home? Who will help me take the grain to the mill? Asked the little red hen. Not I, said the pig. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the rat. Surely you will, the little red hen said to the goat. You are strong and steady, and it's a lovely day to take out your cart. Not I, said the goat. Wow, her friends really are not collaborating. I hope that she has some help to get it there. Let's see what happens. Very well then, said the little red hen. I will do it myself. So she fetched her shawl, then trudged off to the mill. Mr. Miller ground the, her grain into flour and even gave her a jar of berry jam. The little red hen thanked him and began her long trek home. So this is Mr. Miller and he's giving her a gift of berry jam. I wonder what kind of jam that is. It looks like blueberry How to me. How about you? Okay, let's see what she does with the grain in the flour. Who will help me bake the bread? Asked the little red hen. Not I, said the dog. Not I, said the rat. Not I, said the goat. Surely you will, the little red hen said to the pig. Surely the pig's gonna help her, we hope. It won't take much effort at all, and you always, you're always delighted with my cooking. Not I, said the pig. Okay, well, let's see what the little red hen does. Very well then, said the little red hen. I will do it myself. She mixed the flour with yeast and salt and water, then kneaded the dough shaped it into a loaf and put it into the oven. At last, the bread was done. As the little red hen took the hot loaf of wheat bread out of the oven, a tasty aroma circled the barnyard. Mmm, I can almost smell it. How about you? I love whole wheat bread, especially freshly baked. Let's see what she'll do with it. Looks like everyone can smell it. Look at the aroma going out the window. I know who will eat the golden bread, said the little red hen. I surely will, said the short brown dog. I surely will, said the thin great rat. I surely will, said the tall black goat. I surely will, said the round pink pig. Hmm. Let's see who gets a chance to eat some of this delicious whole wheat bread. Oh, no, you won't, said the little red hen. You did not help me plant the seeds, nor thresh the wheat, nor take the grain to the miller, nor bake the bread. Looks like they're a little disappointed. Little brown dog's got his his paws 
He's licking his paws. <laughs> Let's see who gets to enjoy this bread. My chicks and I will eat it, quacked the little red hen. She set the table for herself and her family, cut the warm, soft bread, then spread the sweet berry jam on each slice. Oh, joy of joys. <laughs> oh, how I love this story. This was my favorite childhood book. Perseverance pays off and diligence. It's good to help your parents. So the next time your parents ask you to do something like such as help make bread, be the first one to volunteer. <laughs> Thank you for that story, Sabrina. I love that story. Okay, well, if you've been sitting for a while, do you want to get up and do a song? Let's stand up yeah. and do a Zoom song. I'm sure some of you may know that. Let's do our Zoom, Zoom, Zoom. And then if you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship, okay? And then we're going to count down from five. Okay, here we go. Zoom, 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 I'm going to the moon. Zoom, 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 I'm going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. In five, four, three, two, one, <laughs> blast off. <laughs> very good, very good. Do you want to do that one more time? Uh, yeah, so I can get it right. <laughs> yeah, okay, here we go. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. Zoom, 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 we're going to the moon. If you want to take a trip, Climb aboard my rocket ship. Zoom, zoom, zoom. We're going through the moon. In five, four, three, two, one. <laughs> Blast off. <laughs> All right. That's very amazing. good. Very good. Very good. Okay. You ready for another story? This is going to be called Head, Body, Legs, a story from Siberia. It's retold by Wandley Pei and Margaret H. Lippert, and it's a square fish publication. Head, Body, Legs. Long ago, Head was all by himself. He had no legs, no arms, no body. He rolled everywhere. All he could eat were things on the ground that he could touch with his tongue. And there's his red tongue there. At night, he rolled under a cherry tree and fell asleep and dreamed of some sweet cherries. Do you like cherries? Cherries are so delicious. One morning, Head woke up and thought, I'm tired of grass and mushrooms. I wish I could reach those cherries. And he rolled himself up a little hill. Maybe if I get a good head start, I can hit the trunk hard enough to knock some cherries off, he thought. He shoved with his ears and began to roll down the hill. Here I go, he shouted, faster and faster and faster and crash. Ow, he cried. Who's there, someone asked. Head looked up. Above him swung two arms he had never seen before. Look down here and you'll see. How can we look? Asked arms. We don't have eyes. I have an idea, said Head. Let's get together. I have eyes to see and you have hands for picking things to eat. Okay, said arms. They dropped to the ground and attached themselves to Head above the ears. This, said Head, is perfect. Do you think uh, arms attached to a head is perfect? No, nah, I don't know about that. <laughs> Hand picked cherries and Head ate every single one. It's time for a nap, said Head. Oh, yawning soon, he was fast asleep. What do you think will happen next? While Head slept, Body bounced along and landed on top of him. Help, 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 I can't breathe. Arms pushed Body off. Hey, said Body, stop 
pushing me. Who are you? It's us, Head and Arms, said Head. You almost squashed us. Watch where you're going. How can I, asked Body. I can't see. There's Big Body. He's almost squashed them, didn't he? Why don't you join us, said Head. I see some ripe mangoes across the river. If you help us swim over there, I'll help you see where you're going. Okay, said Body. So Head attached himself to Body at the belly button. This, said Head, is perfect. Do you think a head attached to a belly button, button is perfect? Mmm, <laughs> don't think so. They bounced down the bank into the river. Pull right, pull left, Head shouted to the arms who paddled frantically against the current. Oh, why do you think they paddled so fast? Oh my goodness, what is that? Looks like an alligator looking for lunch. Soon, they reached the far bank and bounced up to the mango tree. Do you like mangoes? I love mangoes. They're really, really good. Pick some, Head ordered. Arms stretched as high as they could. They stretched, 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 but they couldn't quite reach. Head looked around for a stick. Standing near the tree were two crossed legs with feet on the ends. Get those, Head said to Arms. Arms grabbed them. Let us go, let us go, shouted Legs. Who are you? asked Head. We're Legs. We were walking, but we bumped into this tree. Join us, said Head. I have eyes. I can show you where to go, and you can help us reach those mangoes. Okay, said Legs. So Legs attached themselves to the hands. Not there, do Legs attach themselves to hands? Uh, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> Not there, said Arms. The hands need to be free to pick the mangoes. I should be in the middle, said Body, because I'm the biggest. What do you think? That's right, said Head. You should be at the bottom, Legs. I'll swing around on top of Body so I can see everything. And Arms, you move to the shoulders. So there they are, moving all the body parts <laughs> into the right place. Everyone slid into place. Legs stood on tiptoe and body, see he's standing on tiptoe right there, and uh, body straightened out, arms stretched way up, and hands picked the mango. Wow, look at that, mm. they picked the mango. <laughs> Mmm, delicious, Head said. Now this is perfect. And that's the story of Head, Body, Legs. I hope you enjoyed that. And this just talks to us about all the body parts cooperating so they can reach their goal, right? They wanted to get the fruit. So I thank you for reading that or listening to us read that story now. Um, we that have. was absolutely wonderful. Head, body, and legs. Mm. Kind of a little bit like the little red hen. Mm. When you cooperate, mm. perseverance, um, you, you can reach your goals. So I absolutely love that. Thank you. Well, Carla, it's been a joy spending this time. We have one last song. Yep. And um, we're going to sing it in French, Francaise, and also in English. The name of this song is called Je t'aime, je t'aime, je t'aime. And this song is very dear to my heart because it's a song that was created um, from the heart um, uh, when I was on the mission field in Haiti. And so Carl and I have learned it together and we're excited to share it with you. We hope you enjoy it. It goes like this. Je t'aime, it says, I love you, I love you. I love you, my baby. Je t'aime, je t'aime, je t'aime. Je t'aime, je t'aime, je t'aime. Je t'aime, je t'aime, je t'aime, my baby. Thank you. We're going to sing it one last time. And again, je t'aime means I love you in French. <laughs> and we're so glad you joined us for this story time. And so we look forward to you tuning in again 
And we just want to let you know we love you. I love you. I love you. I love you, my baby. Je tim, je tim, je tim. Je tim, je tim, je tim. Je tim, je tim, je tim. My baby. Have a wonderful day. Bye-bye. Tune in for more story time. Thank you. Carla, thank you. Thank you, Sabrina. That was fun.